Hey folks, this podcast goes beyond the saddle as we explore professional careers across the equine industry. I'm your host, Katie Kleinbell. Let's tack up and head out. This episode of Beyond the Saddle is brought to you by Practical Horsemen, and today we feature boss mare, Mary Campbell. Mary is the founder of Mare Modern Goods, an equestrian brand whose mission it is to create beautiful, well-designed products that tell a story of the human horse connection. Mary lives in Atlanta with her wife, three dogs, Paul, Annie, and Albert, and horse, Socorro, fondly known as hashtag the Mare Mare on Instagram. Mary, thanks so much for joining us today. We're excited to get to know you here on the podcast as well as Mare Modern Goods. So thanks for coming on. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. It's so fun to connect and to uh, be able to share more about Mare and myself with with your audience. Yeah. Well, let's dive in. Um, Before this call and before we set up the interview, I asked you to prepare two truths and one lie. (laughs) So I'm going to have you read those in any order and I'm going to try to guess which one's your lie. Wish me luck. Okay. All right. Number one, I love hardware stores. Ooh, okay. Number two, the thing I miss most during the pandemic is going to parties. And number three, I hate social media. I'm going to say that the social media is your lie because you have such a huge following and your social media is so cute. So I'm going to say you actually love social media. That is not true. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, uh, yes. What I don't like about social media is kind of what it's done to, I think, humanity, that it's made us all kind of distilled into these sound bites. And, um, you know, we, we, we curate like these ideas of who we want to be versus the reality of who we are. So I don't like it for how it sort of minimized our ability to really connect on a real level with people. So I don't necessarily hate like my own social media. I just don't like social media for what it's done for culture, I think. Sure. I hear that. Yeah, absolutely. That makes a ton of sense. And I think so many people are like, we're all frustrated too. And we've all been stuck inside, right? And so like social media has been like our outlet. So I think we're all like drained at this point too. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Talk to me about hardware stores. I'm excited to hear more about that. (laughs) I love hardware stores. I don't know why. I've always loved them ever since I was a kid. I just, I love walking down the aisles and looking at all the things and trying to figure out what I could potentially use them for. (laughs) Um, I also like building things and like making things. So I think that's part of it too, is that it's just like a huge warehouse of things that I can use to make or build or whatever. (laughs) I love that. Big on DIY. Is that your, your jam? Uh, you know, I used to be not as much because I've learned my limitations, um, <laughs> a, a few failed projects. And I'm like, you know, I should probably just hire somebody. For that. <laughs> that makes sense, too. That is yes. that's healthy <laughs> to be. Yes, aware of. I have a healthy respect for my own limitations. And you're not you're not much on parties, huh? Not really. No, I am kind of an introvert uh, in in a lot of ways. So I tend to like, you know, my alone time and being more by myself or with small groups of people. So I have not missed having to go to parties or large group gatherings over the past year. (laughs) All the small talk, right? All the small talk. All the small talk. Exactly. <laughs> I don't blame you one one bit. <laughs> well, let's talk more about your job and about your company. So can you tell us in your own words, what do you do? What's your job? My job. Well, my job entails a lot of different things. I guess it probably makes sense to start with telling you a little more about Mare. Um, so Mare started in 2016, and then we launched our website in 2017. So this year, we'll be celebrating four years of being in business. You know, my job as it relates to Mare is kind of everything. Um, it is not one, you know, one part of it, it's, it's kind of every aspect of it. So it's answering customer emails, it's hacking and shipping the orders, it's keeping up with the website and making sure all the products are correct on the site. And luckily, I have wonderful customers who let me know when it's not. <laughs> it's managing inventory, it's creating marketing material, social posts, uh, designing new patterns, and products, planning out all my events and shows that I do. Maintaining my little mini mirror mobile boutique, which is my trailer that I haul to horse shows and sell out of. Handling all my vendors and those relationships and managing relationships and issues related to my product development. So it's a lot of different things. I find I'm wearing a lot of different hats on every single day, really. So that's uh, my, my job is hard to really kind of define, but it's leading the, this charge of owning mayor goods right now. It's all the things. You don't sound busy at all. Nah. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I just kick back most days and, you know, take a bubble right. bath. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> exactly. Um, so I was, of course, browsing through your website and your Instagram and looking at all the adorable things you have. I mean, do you design all of the prints? Like, are you the graphic designer behind all those adorable horses and things? Oh, yes. Actually, I am. So that's my background. My background is in creative, uh, the creative world, marketing, uh, branding, and that sort of thing. So I kind of had a natural talent for that. And then my passion, of course, was horses. So I brought those two things together and started Mare. But yeah, I do all the artwork for it. I design all the patterns. I design the products. So it's it's a lot of work. It's weird when you sit back and you start listing out. I mean, that was kind of, I was taken back by when we were, we were thinking about these questions. It's like, you know, I there's a lot of things that go into running a business, you know? So yeah. hopefully at some point I'll be able to hand off some of those things to other people. But for right now, it's me. <laughs> it's all you, all day. Yeah. <laughs> all day. I love the sound of your trailer, like your little mobile store. Like that sounds adorable. <laughs> it's super fun. I got it, I guess, two years ago because I would go to horse shows and set up with like my tent and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, as you know, with horse shows, the weather is never good. It's like either windy or rainy or it's hot or it's cold or it's, <laughs> you know, whatever. I mean, it's rare that you have like a day where it's just gorgeous. So I was just tired of like the weather, you know, assaulting me at every horse show. So I, I needed some protection and my little trailer became kind of this cute little curated space that I was able to really define more and make more of like an actual retail experience, which is what I wanted. I didn't want it to feel like, you know, you're walking into some jankety trailer with a bunch of stuff in it. It was like, I really wanted it to feel like you're walking to a thoughtful store that was, you know, designed and curated for you to shop in. So that's, um, that's been a fun addition to my business. And I think it's really kind of taken it to another level, which, which is just really neat. Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. That sounds so cute. Well, tell yeah. us more about like the kind of products you have, like you have a full range, so maybe not all of them, but if you can give us an idea of flavor of all the things you offer. Yeah. So we started with basic things like a baseball cap, t-shirt, tote bag, zipper pouches, greeting cards, art prints. Um, and th those are kind of the main products. Uh, we now have like socks and belts and some home accessories. Like that's one thing that I was really wanting to push for this year was creating more of like a home goods line. So doing some pillows, adding some barware, some little cocktail napkins, which I've really had fun working on. Um, <laughs> and um, what else? Uh, saddle pads. I try to stay away from a lot of technical gear because that's already being done. And, you know, I'm not going to be like the girth maker of the world. So that's just not what I want to do. I really want to create products that are more tangential for a customer and that they can kind of add to their collections of things. So, yeah, I think that kind of sums up all the products. I'm trying to think, oh, I have some jewelry, too. That's probably about it. <laughs> I love it. And they're all so fun, right? Like, I think you speak so purely to like the horse owner, like the horse woman, the mare, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, they're just, they make me smile. Like all of your phrases are so cute. It just, it's just a really delightful experience. <laughs> That's awesome. That's, that was kind of what I wanted. You know, I, um, when I started mare, I had taken about 20 years off of riding. Like I rode when I was a kid and then got away from it for a, a long time and then got back into it. And, you know, in the meantime, I was working on my career and, you know, it was really into the marketing world and branding and creative and all this kind of stuff. And so, um, you know, I started taking a look at like, well, what are the cool equestrian brands out there? Like what's that, what's going on now? Like it's been 20 years, certainly something has changed in 20 years and there's gotta be like this amazing plethora of fun things to get. And I really didn't find much. I mean, it was a lot of the same stuff, the same, you know, the same basic brands were out there, the same basic big box stores were selling things. And you know, it was all kind of beige and brown and black. And, you know, obviously I like color. So, um, <laughs> I was like, you know, now, this is an opportunity. You know, there's got to be other people that are like me that want to have products that reflect their, you know, personalities and, you know, maybe have more of a modern pattern driven sensibility. Um, I mean, I was very inspired by, I love Bowdoin. I don't know if you're familiar with Bowdoin, but it's a, a British apparel line. And I mean, they just have beautiful, fun fabrics and patterns and like there's the colors are so happy. And, you know, for me, it was like, I really wanted to bring something that brought the joy that I feel around horses into the products that I was creating for people who love horses. So that, that was kind of where, uh, where it all came from. I love all that. And it translates perfectly. Like you have achieved that. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's, so, it's always so good to hear that from other people because, you know, you get stuck in your own world and you don't really know how things are being absorbed and, and integrated and, you know, interpreted by your customers. So it's really fun to hear people 
say that back to me because it makes me realize like, okay, I'm doing it right. <laughs> you're doing it right. Absolutely. If you're making things that you love, chances are there's other people are going to love it too. And that is a hundred percent true. <laughs> That's so true. It's so true. Can you walk us through like, what's a typical day for you? You know, a typical day is pretty uneventful. It's not super exciting. I get up about 6.15. I usually work out. Um, I make my coffee, feed the dogs, um, and then I kind of get into the office. I mean, it's a lot of office work for me, and I still do some freelance work on the side. So there's some, you know, I have clients that I work with still with that. So I try to divide my day in terms of, like, my client work and then my my mirror work. And, you know, really, it's it's kind of bouncing around uh, between a lot of different things. So, like I mentioned earlier, there's, like, a, a list of different things that you have to be responsible for. So some days it's more like, okay, I really got to deal with these customer emails. I've got a, got a bunch of orders I got to pack up, you know, I've got to go figure out my inventory. So, you know, it just really just depends on what's going on. Um, you know, in that particular week or, you know, if I've got a show coming up, like I need to make sure I've got all my inventory set up in my trailer and I'm ready to go because I like to be organized and ready. Yes. Recipe for success, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, the common misconception that people might have about the role that you have, the role that you play in your company, um, can we bust it? Hmm. That is a great question. Um, I think one thing I was thinking about was that people think it's always fun. <laughs> You're just always having like a party. And, um, <laughs> While it is fun, and I do love pretty much every aspect of the creation and building of my business, there's a lot of moving in between different functions and tasks, which keeps me interested and engaged. Um, and I'm always learning, and there's a lot of challenges. Um, but there are some times that I just want someone to tell me what to do, <laughs> which yeah. is ironic because I hate being told what to do. And uh, <laughs> that's kind of why I've always been an independent worker and, you know, been drawn more to contract work and freelance work than working in full-time jobs. But, you know, sometimes you just want to just have somebody tell you, look, just do this, don't do that. So I think that's maybe, maybe one of the misconceptions. Yeah, I hear that. I think it's sometimes it's nice to be able to, well, I mean, that's what the boss lady wants and it's like a mindless right. kind of thing. But when you're the boss lady, <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> When you mess up, it's all on you. I mean, when you succeed, it's all on you. And you, when you make bad decisions, that's all on you. So, um, you know, you just have to be fully accountable at all times. <laughs> right. Like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Can you walk us through your journey? So like your education through to kind of where you are today, like how did you end up here? I am actually originally from Louisiana, I'm from Baton Rouge, um, and then I went to college in North Carolina at Elon College uh, and got my degree in psychology. I thought I was going to pursue getting a PhD in psychology, um, which I obviously did not. I took a few years off post-college to kind of figure things out and explore different things. Uh, a lot of waiting tables, a lot of bartending, uh, exploring some fine art. I mean, I was painting for several years and doing that kind of to see what I wanted to do. And then I realized like, I'd actually like to have a career path here that's a little more reliable. So I went back to school um, and moved to Atlanta and went to Portfolio Center, which is a two-year program for uh, creative. So you can Focus on all kinds of different things, copywriting, photography, art direction, creative direction, graphic design, illustration. So I spent my two years here um, and got that education and then ended up working at a consultancy here for several years and then went out and decided I wanted to freelance and do some contract work. And so did that, um, took another full-time job working for someone else um, and that, that kind of ran its course. And that's when I went back to freelance and started Mayor. So it's been kind of a, um, not a very straightforward path, I guess you'd say. <laughs> Sometimes those are the best ones, though, because you sort of fell into where you need to go, just sort of like channeling that energy into the right thing. Exactly. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. Hey, podcast listeners, I have another awesome equine podcast that you should check out. And it is the Practical Horseman podcast, which features conversations with respected riders, industry leaders, and horse care experts to inform, educate, and inspire. Co-hosted by Practical Horseman editors Sandra Olinick and Julia Murphy, the podcast has highlighted stars of the sport in eventing, hunters and jumpers, such as Olympians Breezy Madden and Boyd Martin and hunter derby champ Liz Boyd. They and others share their favorite philosophies, training exercises, special horses in their careers, and more. The Practical Horseman Podcast. Take them on the go. Listen to the episodes of Practical Horseman Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts and find them on practicalhorsemanmag.com slash podcast. 
Well, let's talk about your goals, right? Like you're growing this business. You have a huge online presence. You're making all these really adorable things, but I want to know how will you know when you've truly quote unquote made it? That question made me laugh a little bit because I was thinking that that is a very great, that's a great question. Um, (laughs) And I think, you know, as a business, when financially you're stable, of course, no pun intended, you're not, uh, and you're not constantly stretching to make things work. Uh, that feels like a great achievement. But I don't know that I envision like a finish line for myself or my business. Um, I kind of look at all the endeavors that I've pursued as living things, you know, that require my attention and energy and focus. And I guess I feel like if I have made it, quote unquote, mm-hmm. I'll probably want to sell the business because maybe I've given it all that I can and it's time for me to move on and do something else and for someone else to to take it over. So I don't know if that's a good answer to that question, but that's kind of how it feels to me. You know, I, d- I don't know that there is a point at which you just say, OK, I've made it. Now I coast. You know, that that wouldn't be right. fun for me. What's fun for me is the challenge and the growing and the learning and the changing and the evolving and figuring it out. Um and I think that's just built into my my DNA. That's a perfect answer. Absolutely. I mean, because it's not linear, right? Like our lives no. are not linear and growing a business certainly is not linear. So no. who knows, right? Who knows what's right. next or, you know, where that'll lead when you when you reach that point. <laughs> I love that's that. Right. Well, what is next for you? Is there anything that you're hoping to try or learn or do? Like what's on the horizon? There's so There's so much that I want to try and do and learn. I don't I don't know how I would even be able to narrow it down. Um, I think in the immediate future, it's really just continuing to grow the business, expanding into more categories and getting more connected to the community that I'm a part of. Um, I mean, those are the things that kind of drive all of my decisions and what I choose to do next. You know, I'm not, I don't have a focus on dominating the world or becoming some mega brand. Um, I really just want to continue to try to be a positive force in the equestrian world and use the platform for, for telling the stories of all kinds of horses and riders and the power that the relationship that we have with our horses has to change our lives. I mean, I think that's really what's at the heart of the brand is showcasing the amazing, the amazingness of these animals that, that allow us into their life, you know? You know, and I really want to continue to show all different kinds of people in, in the sport. There's definitely a misconception that it's only for a certain kind of person or that, that looks a certain way or that comes from a certain background or um, has a certain kind of body or whatever that is. And um, I, I don't think that's true. I, I, I don't think that's fair. And I, I want to be part of creating that change in our, in our industry so that everyone can see themselves in the equestrian world or somehow connecting to horses, that it's not just for a certain group of elite people or different, you know, people over here. It's for everyone. So that's something that I'm really focused on with my business too. I love that. And Mare is such a great way to do it because you're so welcoming and you're so like uplifting. Like I think a lot of people can connect with it and help break that mold. I love it. Yes. I mean, it should be fun. Horses are to me a source of joy and they're the thing that uh, just lights me up inside. And, you know, I I just don't have time for people that are going to be ugly to other people based on, you know, whatever it is. I mean, everybody's so critical in the horse world and it's like, you know, just let people do what they're going to do as long as they're not harming a horse or you know, doing something bad. It's like, doesn't matter. You know, I don't know if you're familiar at all with the, um, the Facebook page. I'm sure you are the shit of Enters unite. Yes. It's so fun. <laughs> I love that page. <laughs> it's kind of my favorite page and because it's funny and I like funny. Um, but it's also just like, it's real, you know, it's like, none of us are perfect. You know, none of us, many of us are not going to reach the pinnacle of, you know, equestrian success. We're not going to ride in the Olympics or in Land Rover or whatever, or Bur- Burley or whatnot. But it's like, you know, it's just kind of looking at it with a little less of a serious lens and saying, you know, we're all just doing the best we can. And sometimes we on our face and it's funny and we just have to laugh and move on and that's life you know yeah for sure at the end of the day we do this because we love it and it it is fun and sometimes we forget that sometimes we get wrapped up in all the other you know money and all the other things that go with it too right right for sure well I know you probably have some advice to offer since you have kind of started this company from the ground up and built it to what it is today so I'd love to know what's one thing you wish you had known when you first started out Well, I think when I just, when I started out just in life, I think that I wish I would have known that it's okay that you don't know what you want to do when you grow up, like that you don't have to have all the answers. And I think that, you know, your curiosities and your interests and your natural talents are the most important thing you can pay attention to when you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your career. 
And, you know, I think if you're truly alive and truly engaged in your own evolution and development, you're going to change and you're going to grow. And that may impact who you are and what you do and ultimately what you decide to become. So it's, you know, it's about having more of a growth mindset than anything. And also that there are virtually no mistakes that you can make when you're when you're being true to yourself as you figure things out. I, I remember my, you know, my parents were always like, what in the world are you doing? Like, w- you, this doesn't make any sense. Like, they're very kind of logical, pragmatic people. And it was like, my career path was like, you know, there wasn't, it was not a straight line. Um, and so, and that's okay. Because all the things that you decide to do, as long as you're being true to yourself and honest, they're going to lead you to the right place eventually. And, and lastly, I would say, you, you never really figure things out. You know, you think like, oh, I'm, once I get to a certain point, then I'm going to know what's up. I'm going to have all the answers. I'm going to like be full of knowledge and be able to impart all this great wisdom to everyone. But the more you know, the more you realize that there's so much more to discover. So I think that would be my advice. Those are three great tokens of wisdom. Um, <laughs> I especially love that, like, you'll never feel like you have it figured out. So like, yeah. I think that's a big misconception for so many people. Like I thought, okay, you know, I'm just starting a new job. Okay. But like two years into this job, like I'm going to have it all figured out. And like, I'm going to know exactly. No, now I just have more questions about the things we should learn right. and the things we should be doing. And so, but it's that growth mindset. Like you said, it's not about the destination. Like if you have a destination mindset, you're like limiting yourself. But if you're thinking right. about the ways you're growing, then you're always asking questions. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's so true. Well, what advice do you have for anyone that's looking to pursue a career like yours? Maybe they're looking to open, you know, their own shop or, you know, thinking about graphic design and, and putting it on some cute products or I don't know, what would you say to those people? I think generally speaking, I I would encourage people to develop like a certain mindset about things. And so it doesn't really matter if you're going to be creating a product line or you're going to be a horse trainer or you're going to be a doctor or you're going to be anything. I feel like the things that I try to think about are applicable to anybody. And the first thing is to always be curious, like just to remain curious about everything around you. Um, maybe, maybe that's why I like hardware stores too, because half the <laughs> stuff in there, I'm like, I don't know what the hell this is, but it's kind of cool. And maybe I could do something with it. Also developing a gritty mentality so that you can stick with things when they get hard. I think that's something that it's really tough for people to, to wrap their heads around. Um, I don't know about you, but I watch a lot of shark tank. And so, uh, <laughs> shark tank kind of makes you feel like success should happen faster than it does or that it happens, uh, you know, in a period of time and that time is somehow determined by someone else. Things happen in their own time, you know, and sometimes it takes a year for a for a business or an idea or something to really catch on. Sometimes it takes 10 years and you kind of have to just have a mentality of like, I'm going to stick with it until it does. That's something that I think is really important. Um, And then learning how to have patience, you know, like having just patience with everything. And especially, I think a lot of people have this already with horses, but uh, just not forcing things to happen and not you know, demanding that they do, but really just having the trust and the understanding that if you do all the right things and do all the right work and you just stick with it, that it will happen over time. You just have to be patient. And then I think finally, like one thing that I've been blessed with in some ways is that I've had some jobs where I've had to work with some people that were really difficult and um, (laughs) um, learning how to work with others to me, is one of the most important things. Um, it doesn't matter if they're your competitors or your vendors or your employees or anything else, but kindness and respect and honesty uh, get you further than anything anything else in life. And how you treat people in life means more than how much money you make or how successful you are or what you can create or achieve. So I think, you know, it's that's a really, really important thing. I mean, I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, once I get to be a certain level, then I don't have to, I don't have to care about how people feel about me or, you know, how I treat people because I'm the boss, you know, or whatever. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, it's not like that. Um, I mean, and it's just like horses. I mean, I think that's why horses are such a great metaphor. It's like they, we're not, we're not there to command them to do things. We're there to work with them in partnership. So I think that's, I think if we can do that in every aspect of our life, that will create a better outcome for you all the way around. That was a golden advice section. (laughs) So much goodness just came out of that. I like just wrote down words as you were talking, like, be curious, have grit, be patient, like trust the time, (laughs) work with people, have kindness, honesty, like work in partnership, like all the things like we know we should do, but you articulated it so well. So everybody like rewind a couple minutes, go back and re-listen to that and then do it. Be that person, be Mary. (laughs) Yeah. 
Well, and, and know that sometimes you're not going to get it right. I mean, there are going to be days where you're kind of an asshole and you screw up and you've got to just kind of pick yourself up from that and move on and um, apologize if you need to and have humility when you have to. I mean, that's just part of life. You know, no one's going to be perfect and awesome every day. I mean, mm-hmm. that's just unreasonable. And sometimes that's the hardest part, right? But sometimes that's the part we struggle with the most and the most necessary, but you got to do it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I'm excited for your answer to this next question because of um, kind of the perspective you've already given us. So, Mary, in your own words, what does it mean to be an equine industry professional? For me, what it just really means is that somehow you've managed to figure out how to make a living working alongside these amazing creatures. And you're always dirty. I mean, that's kind of it. (laughs) Check and check. (laughs) The best, the happiest place to be. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Well, let's, yeah, let's talk more about horses. Tell us about your horse. Well, I lease a horse right now. Hopefully I will purchase her at some point. Her name is Socorro and she's an Oldenburg mare. Um, I've been riding her for, I guess about a year and a half now. Before that, I was uh, leasing uh, a gelding, a Lusitano gelding named Callie. But I figured that was totally off brand for me to be on a gelding. Like I needed to be on mare, obviously. But anyway, things changed with the other lease. And so I ended up with with Socorro. And um, she's a really cool horse. I mean, she's, you know, like pretty much everyone out there, she's a mirror to who I am. So she like startles at everything. And she's a little bit dramatic about certain things. But she's also really brave. Like she's, it's just, it's funny how she's such a contradiction of things. Like she, well, we know we walk down to the arena, same arena we've been at for a year and a half. And she speaks to this water trough that's been there for exactly a year, every single time. But then we get on a cross country and she's totally fine. Like doesn't spook at anything, doesn't, you know, doesn't shy at anything, says yes to all the questions, you know, you know, who knows? Their Horses. quirks are the best part. I love that. I know. <laughs> it's it's funny because it used to frustrate me a little bit. And now I've just gotten to the point where I'm like, I just kind of have to laugh at it because it's like, you know, she's just being herself, you know, that's she's right. just being her little horsey self. And it's not my job to get mad at her. Or, you know, my job is try to understand her. So uh, yeah, she's, she's a fun, she's a fun partner. She's so beautiful too. I love that she's got color. She's a paint, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I love that too. It's a blessing and a curse because when you ride well, people notice it. And then when you ride really poorly, people notice it. So that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We went to a, a I did our first recognized show a couple of months ago and I haven't braided since I was like, 15. And I was like, I'm fine. I got this. No problem. Yeah. And uh, like the night before I'm like braiding and it, it was a disaster. I mean, oh, no. <laughs> they were horrible. It looked awful. Like my trainer was like, Oh my God, what is going on out there? I'm like, I don't know how to fix this. Like I've spent four hours doing this and it oh. looks awful. <laughs> and Socorro is probably like, Oh my God, mom, get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> like, please stop this. <laughs> yeah. So oh, they keep us on our toes. Except for this crazy mane that had like these awful spiky braids everywhere. Oh, it's a, it's a mess. But honestly, I didn't care. I was just like, whatever. It's braided. I'm here to have fun. Stuff. It's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you have a most memorable moment with horses that you could share with us? Um, you know, I think probably recently I had a really memorable moment with Socorro because I've, um, I'm not really an adrenaline junkie. Like that's not my thing. So cross country has always been the thing that terrifies me with riding. Like I just, the thought of being in an open field, galloping with jumps, all the things that could potentially go wrong. I mean, you know, never do a Google search of rotational falls because you'll never get on a horse again. So it was like, Oh my God, this is so scary. I had totally worked myself up into an anxiety about cross country and I've been working through that and I'm getting better at it. But at our last show, um, I was like, you know what, I'm going to totally really focus on my mindset for this and, and really try to get calm about it and just try to enjoy the process and enjoy the ride and not be such, you know, such a freak about everything. And for whatever reason, you know, it just clicked between the two of us. And I had one of the best rides. I mean, I was literally grinning like ear to ear. I mean, I totally screwed up a few things. It was just one of those amazing times where you're just like, this is what it's supposed to be. Like, I trust her. She's having fun. I'm having fun. You know, this is just when you're in sync, you know, you're in the flow. So that was, uh, it was one of those times where I was like, okay, I actually, I think I really like this (laughs) and I'm not scared. So this is fun. 
That's like that bright, shiny moment. <laughs> One of my friends always says that like owning horses and riding horses is like 95% like anxiety and stress and worry. And then there's like 5% of this glorious, like, oh my gosh, this is so wonderful. And that's what we live for. <laughs> totally, totally. I mean, we're total junkies when it comes to that. It's like 90% of it, like you said, it's like fear and anxiety. And then you have those moments where you're like, this is amazing. I mean, this is why I go out here in the middle of winter and freeze my ass off because I'm going to have this one ride. <laughs> exactly. So worth it. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Oh, Mary, it has been so much fun getting to talk with you. Thank you again so much from the bottom of my heart for coming on the show and sharing with us. It's been delightful. <laughs> awesome. Yes. It was so fun. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm so glad you asked me to come on. Yay. Well, let's just sort of wrap up. I know people are going to want to connect with you. They're, of course, going to want to go check out Mare Modern Goods. So what's the best place that the audience can connect with you? Our social media accounts, Facebook and Instagram are at Mare Goods. And our website is www.maregoods.com. Beautiful. And then is there anything they should do when they get there? Anything you want them to check out? Like I know you just launched those um, super cute cocktail napkins. So yes. I, think I might have to order those. <laughs> yes, those are super cute, super fun. Um, you know, just take a look around. Um, we've got a whole line of all new products for spring with our kitchen and bar and beverage accessories. So those are fun. Um, I'll be having two new patterns that are coming out soon. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll have a whole lineup of new products with those uh, new patterns. Um, and then, you know, as always, I mean, we love it when people comment on, on social media and share pictures of themselves and our goods. Like we try to repost everything that we get from our customers, but it's always fun just to see. I mean, I love making the connection between like who I'm sending the products to and then, you know, uh, what they look like when they're wearing them and how much fun they're having in them. So, I mean, that's, that's always a delight for me. Yeah. Mare goods, IRL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, let's just close up with uh, your closing thoughts. So anything that you want to leave our listeners with, you know, when they think back on this episode with you, Mary, where do you want to leave them? I think, you know, kind of going back to what I said earlier about being a curious person, you know, just being curious about your own interests and your desires, what makes your horse tick, um, what makes people tick. Um, and, you know, having a, a curious mind, because that, that that's an open mind and an open mind has no limits, you know, so I think that would be my advice to, to anyone or just kind of the parting thought that I would want to leave you with. Thanks for writing along. Know someone that would be great to interview? Have questions you'd like answered on the podcast? Send me an email at beyondthesaddlepodcast at gmail.com or join the conversation on social media. You can connect with us and learn more about the Beyond the Saddle podcast by following us on Facebook and Instagram at Beyond the Saddle Podcast. Find more episodes anywhere that you get your podcasts, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and more. Beyond the Saddle is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of Equine Network, LLC. 